Hello again, I'm Dr. Inman, head of the International Association of Veterinary Chiropractitians. This is a uh, mini lecture on anterior cruciate ligament rupture repair and non-surgical approach to anterior cruciate ligament rupture repair, ACL repair essentially. Um, uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure that you're aware of the anterior cruciate ligament rupture repair surgically is in fact the most common orthopedic surgery done in veterinary medicine. Last year alone, in 2014 rather, uh, 2.1 billion dollars with a B were spent on anterior cruciate rig ligament rupture repair surgically in the, in the United States alone. The anterior cruciate ligament actually ruptures due to the fact that the cross ligaments, cruciate ligaments in the knee, are actually twisted over one another and internal rotation, internal rotation snaps that anterior cruciate ligament essentially. It's internal rotation that actually produces the problem. If you go down on your leg, internally rotate it and extend, you can actually feel your anterior cruciate ligament tighten up. Do not do that because you can injure your own knee just by doing what I just suggested. In the canine, essentially, that internal rotation actually provides this particular phenomenon and causes a either stretch, a tear, a partial tear, a complete rupture of the anterior cruciate ligament. So the ligament right here is basically internally rotated relative to the femur and that puts that pressure on that. That can occur when the dog is romping and playing or it is predisposed by other conditions that we found out a long, long time ago. Now, the thing that's of interest that we have found is that we found that every dog that we had that came in in the early 1980s with anterior cruciate ligament uh, uh, rupture, and we would diagnose that with radiography and also by a drawer or something. We would anesthetize the animal and we would move the joint relative to one another to get a drawer sign, essentially, from the femur to the tibia's head. And if we have lots of motion like that, it's obviously an anterior cruciate rupture. And so we have that phenomenon diagnosed. But we noticed that virtually all of those animals gave us an L45 boop boop reading pattern, a reflexive pattern. Now, if you go to the vomtech.com website, you go down the index page, the first page essentially, you can click on a link that'll show you how the technique is done, why it works, and how to apply it in your practice. We give that to you for free. You can just basically look at that and apply this technology successfully to these animals. But my point here is that this particular phenomenon of reflex that we found in the early 1980s we thought was because the knee problem was painful and therefore it, it ascends into the spinal cord and gives us this reflexive problem. Well, the fact is, is that's not exactly what the situation is. But what actually, um, we found that the anterior cruciate ligament, when ruptured essentially, and operated on successfully. And by the way, there's about 35 different techniques of anterior cruciate rupture repair. We had in almost all of them to graduate in 1979 from vet school. But the, uh, the nature of all of them is to stabilize the knee so it has a chance to resolve itself, essentially. I don't have an anterior cruciate ligament as I have an artificial knee and therefore no cruciate ligament in my left knee. But my knee is stable because the surgeon put in a lot of imbrication and stabilized the knee joint so it doesn't slide around. The nature of almost all the surgeries are designed to do exactly that. It's also been found that if we do surgery on one knee, the chances uh, that the other knee will actually blow out in the next year, calendar year, is about 60 to 80 percent. Now that doesn't make a whole lot of sense because the animal's not favoring the leg we did surgery on anymore because we fixed it. So that didn't make a lot of sense. However, it does make sense if you suggest that the primary problem comes from the subluxation or the injury that we have at L4 and L5, and it exists right here at L4 and L5. Now, L4 and L5 has actually an area of the uh, sciatic nerve that comes out and goes down to the muscles of the quadriceps. And at L4 and L5, it compromises the vastus lateralis, the vastus lateralis being the lateral aspects of the quadriceps mechanism that extends the knee. If the vastus lateralis is compromised here, the vastus lateralis is getting a D, where the medialis, the rectus femoris, and also the vastus medius is getting an A, and that causes an extension of the knee with internal rotation. And that's how the internal rotation is basically preset and, and, and just uh, moved a couple notches closer to being at the rupture point. So an over-enthusiastic dog chasing a ball or a frisbee or uh, rolled around or uh, uh, fall down has an injury or just seemingly doesn't have any other particular uh, exacerbating event that causes it will blow the anterior cruciate ligament out because it's just taken to that point where it's almost ready to blow 
and it doesn't take much more to get it to blow all away essentially. So a dog that was naturally romping and playing one day all of a sudden now yips and has got his three leg and his toe touching. That's indicative of in fact that problem. It's the most common orthopedic disease condition that we see in veterinary medicine. Now how do we take care of it? Well we found out a long period of time that we can do a number of different things. Uh, uh, John Harity, a veterinarian I've trained actually on the East Coast in Virginia, it ran across so many of these animals where the client could not afford the $4,000 to $6,000 per knee surgery that uh, this particular phenomenon has become. And unfortunately, uh, that may be prohibitively expensive. And so when they would come to him in hopes that he could use a chiropractic approach to try to take care of that. Now, John and I are both surgeons from way back. So a chance to cut is a chance to cure as far as we're concerned. But not allowing being allowed to do surgery, said, oh, what the heck, we'll try the adjustment technique and cross our fingers. He did 63 of these cases. He pulled 63 of these cases over a three-year period of time. And then he, he basically followed these cases and found out that 61 out of 63 responded uh, favorably to the VOM plus laser therapy, which we'll show you in a minute. They basically would go in there and do the adjustment technology like we'll show you on the website, vomtech.com, and then adjust them on day one, day three, day seven, day 14, day 21, and 28. Now on day 28, or actually before that, the dog is walking relatively normally. The dog still has a blown anterior cruciate ligament, but what we've done with the adjustment is we've balanced out the quadriceps so it's not internally rotating every time the dog puts weight on that leg. And therefore, the dog can favor it until the fibrous connective tissue of the joint stabilizes that joint, and then the animal doesn't have to have surgery. Um, there are animals that have so much irritation and injury and men meniscal click and a meniscal damage in there that we have to go in there surgically about 80 percent of them don't have to have surgery which is kind of phenomenal and basically you won't find that um, uh, anyone except for the 4,000 veterinarians I've trained doing this approach the good news is is we can always do surgery in that knee and we can with a series of adjustments bypass this surgical approach which is not what a surgeon wants to do, bypass this surgical approach uh, in, in uh, 28 days by using adjusting device. If the animal is sound at the end of, of 28 days, you won. If it's not, then we go to surgery and we're not, we haven't really lost anything whatsoever because we can go in there and clean that joint up quite nicely. Now there's another approach that we use to take care of the anterior cruciate ligament too that actually enhances our approach and I'll show you that in just a second. It's basically the use of um, a laser essentially and so the laser that we use in this particular is a frequency specific laser and then what we use is we do it in this capacity and allows us to rehabilitate the connective tissue of those particular tissues. I'll speak about that in just a second. So as I've mentioned before, we will go through uh, to treat these animals and we will use a series of adjustments in their back. And we did this for years and years and years until the late 1990s. In the, in the early uh, 2000s, we started to use the laser therapy to redirect the connective tissue in the knee. We're use, able to use frequency specific low level laser therapy. Now, it's imperative to understand that we're not using a class four laser, we're using a class two A laser. Most veterinary lasers are class four lasers and they will not do excuse me, they will not do this work. They will not do this. What we're trying to do is we're trying to induce the connective tissue of the knee to rehabilitate itself, the cartilage, the bone, and the connective tissue of the knee. So what we'll do is we'll use a frequency specific laser like this, which basically goes all the way through the dog, and we'll put it into the knee, and it's no more complicated than this. It actually would look a little bit more like, like this, essentially, or we can come from the front and do that. But the fact is we don't have to be very exacting. We don't have to be close. That is the nature of this technology, essentially. Frequency specific low level laser therapy. The frequencies that we're using are the frequencies for the connective tissue. The histios, I'm sorry, the, the fibroblasts actually are being induced to produce collagen to repair the anterior cruciate ligament. Also, there's a frequency, 250 is a frequency we use for the fibers of Sharpie, which are going to allow, essentially, any vestigial uh, anterior cruciate ligament to actually reattach to the bone. Yes, we are going to allow it to reattach to the bone. When we open up these knees after we've done this, several years later, we find out that they have a reasonably intact anterior cruciate ligament where they had a completely ruptured one before. Um, in the surgery, we're told to go in and remove that, that uh, ligament, and we don't do that, of course, uh, with surgery, and we basically cause it to rehabilitate itself. Also, we use 454 as a frequency specifically for rehabilitating the cartilage, and 45 for frequency for rehabilitating the bone. We will treat this animal's knee very commonly with one or two lasers. We may have a, a laser up at the anterior cruciate, I'm sorry, at the foramen magnum, 
and then direct the other laser down towards the knee essentially. We can use a two laser or a single laser approach like this and the treatment time is about 120 to 180 seconds. And so our success rate then has actually gone up from 80% to well over 90% when we use this combination essentially. So we use a combination of VOM specifically and laser, always VOM, sometimes laser, as a means to go ahead and rehabilitate the knee without surgery. This allows the client to have at least a week, a month to determine whether or not they have to uh, dedicate themselves and about $5,000 to a surgery, but which may not have to be taken care of essentially. And so thank you for taking the time to look at this information. There's more information that can be found on the vomtech.com website essentially, and I'd be delighted to actually answer any of your questions. Remember, we have trained in excess of 8,300 graduate doctors in the United States in the last 20 years that are all using this approach to take care of this. 4,000 of them are veterinarians in the United States who are using this approach, essentially. So some of these animals will have to have surgery, but most of them don't. And so, as I mentioned to you, this is a $2.1 billion a year industry. And this particular approach kind of rattles that to some degree. So you'll find a lot of people saying, well, that can't possibly work. Well, tell that to the 4,000 veterinarians that are using it right now. And also tell that to the people who have avoided the surgery, essentially, with this approach, because they're not going to believe you. So, thank you very much. Have a great day, and I'll see you in another one of these videos.